Hi everyone and welcome to Asta's Place. Today I want to show you how to make a texturizing paint, i.e. gesso, using gesso. There's a couple of recipes out there that I've tested, but this is the best one. To be able to make your own is great in an emergency. I was doing a project the other day and I had none, so I want to show you how easy it is to make. In here I've got a cup of baking soda. I now need to add to that half a cup of gesso. So that's all I had, so it was like, oh my goodness, I need to get some texture, what will I use? So I actually had a little bit left and I thought, okay, well, we'll just use that and I'll see what happens. So that's half a cup of gesso goes into there like so. And I should have used a bowl, but never mind. That goes in on top of the baking soda. And the great thing about this gesso is if you're prepping a canvas and you need to have a bit of grip or any kind of sub surface that you need some grip on, this is fantastic. Now onto that, I'm going to put into there about quarter of a cup of some matte, uh, what is that, what is that, Mod Pod. Right, that there just gets stirred up until you have a nice smooth paint or pasty consistency. If you need to, you might, need, see that's quite hard and sort of, that, see how that's sort of like a bit dry in there like that? Well if that happens, all you need to do is to add a little bit more Mod Podge or you could use a little bit of water, but there you have it fraction of the cost and in the next few weeks I'm going to show you all of the great things that you can do with this. Now the other thing I need you to know is that once you've made this, whoops that's very thick but oh, that is just perfect for what I want. Should have used the bowl but never mind, wasn't thinking. But the great thing about this is there's all sorts of things that you can use that to put onto. And see how it's like foaming up like that? The reason that's foaming up there is because that's baking soda and I've actually put moisture into there. So might I suggest next time you're doing it, you put it into a bowl, otherwise you're going to have this big volcano. The other recipe that I've got, oh look at that, oh that is lovely, but that will call, will stop. <laughs> And we'll be able to use that perhaps next time in the event of an emergency we do look at what we're doing but however that will settle down in due course we will be able to put it into a much bigger container and we can go forth so you know we all have disasters don't we hope you've enjoyed that I will see you another day Welcome back everyone. After my disaster, I do need you to know that that gesso paint that I've made with the big volcano, volcanic eruption is okay. It's actually the one that I prefer to do. The other one, if you're ever stuck in an emergency, this is quarter of a cup of PVA glue. That goes into there. That is quarter of a cup of talcum powder. That goes into there. Give that a little stir up. You could use whiting if you had it, but I haven't, so we're just going to worry about using the baby powder, powder will do. And then half a cup of water goes into there. Stir that all up until you've got no lumps. This here is really nice for, like I make this up into big, big containers and then I use this as my tinter. So once with that white shade that I've got, I can just add colour to that as I go. The great thing about this is it gives this lovely grainy finish which is fantastic to work with. So there you go, there's two gesso paints, bang, bang, this one is much, much better. Look at that, see, it gives you that lovely, that there's really, really lovely gritty surface, whereas this one here is a little bit smoother. So it just depends on what the project is, gritty, or if you want a little bit smoother, fantastic. And the thing that, reason about the, um, using the, the gesso that I like is that I can get really lovely texture and it also helps my paint and my other products to stick to whatever surface I'm painting on. Hope you've enjoyed that, I'll see you another day.